Wait for it. And wait we are it. live. Wait for it. What's up, guys? What up? All right. We're doing videos like so consistently these days. I mean, <laughs> you can just always know our schedule. You can follow us. Makes the videos more valuable, maybe. So anybody that followed us knows how spot on we were about so many things through the last end of the bull bear. And now we're like we're in a bull market again. It's you can't deny it. And a lot of people are confused. They don't know. People are like, oh, the economy, the, we're not going to have a real bull market. Um, it's going to pull back. We're going to dump now and it's going to go to a new low. And, and then other people are it's like there's so much misinformation out there. And people and I, I feel it, too, because there's so much noise. And even though this is my third cycle, I feel the noise and it, it's even causing me to lose my focus and sometimes go off in a, in a track somewhere where I shouldn't be going. Um, you know, going away from my what I know works. It, it's hard to avoid the noise and the FOMO when it's all around you. It's really it really is. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, but I mean, there's, there's, there, there are signs and we still haven't seen the four year Bitcoin cycle fail us. I mean, that not is, yet. yeah, not yet. I mean, stuck and, to and flow didn't do so good, but until a narrative and a model fails, it'll just keep working. What else do we have to hang on? Right. I mean, up a shot. we got people coming in. Woohoo. Yeah. Okay. So, hey, how's it going, video. Mohammed? Thanks hey, for what's joining, up? man. What's up? Yeah. How's 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 how are things going in your neck of the woods? In your in your part of the world? All right. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do kind of like just do what we do, and then we'll kind of do, I guess, Q and A. Talk with uh, anybody who's following. So, in this sure. video, we want to talk about you know making money in the bull market taking advantage of it but avoiding the traps because there are a lot of traps in this kind of a market and the biggest one which is so hard it sounds easy but it's hard to avoid and that's fomo you hear about something you don't act then everybody starts talking about it and then you hear about it more and then you hear about it more and then you're like maybe i should get in it and then you get in it and as soon as you get into it it starts to pull back because FOMO, fear of missing out. And how do you avoid that? Because the problem is, is we as human beings and the sheep mentality is we won't really jump into something until everybody's talking about it. And that's probably the worst time to get into it. So um, we want to talk about a little bit of that. How, how do you avoid, how do you avoid the FOMO and, and the traps, Daniel? So FOMO and traps. Well, Here's the thing, you, I think it was Warren Buffett who said, um, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. So you definitely have to look at what the masses are doing. Um, yeah. And I think that, that there was another, uh, another person that kind of had an anecdote that once he, once he heard like uh, his uh, shoe shiner, you know, like people uh, was shining his shoes. He said, "Oh, I got a, I got in on this, uh, on this great stock. You know, I think it's gonna blow up." And it's like, okay, like there's a lot of people who shouldn't be in this kind of industry just talking about that stuff. So we're probably near the top. If we're not really there, then I, I don't, I don't think that we're too late. I, I was talking with you um, um, about a friend we were discussing yesterday. He said. Daniel, yeah, like I saw Bitcoin um, at 15K. I thought we were going to go down to 11K because he heard somebody else uh, say that. But no then we're now, we're, but now we're at 44K. And he said, maybe this is the top. And I'm like, dude, no. Like two months ago, we were at 25K. There's no way that 44K, like right now, it's the top. There is absolutely no way. We have a year plus worth, maybe two years worth of bull market. I mean, this is just getting started. Yep. I mean, we'll have pullbacks and then everybody will freak out and, and then people will sell out after they bought the top and then they'll they'll avoid it until the FOMO kicks back in. So the whole, you know, 
be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. Another way of saying it is have a contrarian approach to the market. You know, it's basically another way of saying contrarian. If everybody's talking about it, that's probably a good time to start selling. You're doing the opposite of the crowd. Uh, if nobody wants it and everybody says Bitcoin is dead and you hear nobody talking about it and, and the price is really low and everybody's going, it's 15,000. I think it's going to go to 11. It's like, I, I've said this in the past. It's like, are you seriously going to be banking on trying to get from 15 to 11 as opposed to just going, you know what? Maybe I should just get in at 15 and look at the 100. It's like, it doesn't make any logical sense to be trying to wait for that 15, you know, $4,000 down when you could be going up from 15K, 16K up 80,000. 85,000, you know, it's just people don't think that way. They just, so, um, you know, coins that are not being talked about, but have no reason to be down. Those are the ones that you should be looking at, you know? Yeah. Right now, the and ones that are getting all the attention, I'm a little bit, I'm weary of them. I'm like, I don't know, you know? Yeah. And there's also this, um, this kind of it's not a chart but this kind of flow of um where the money's going so like if we're uh like first you know people cash out they're they're earning cash whatever then people go into bitcoin bitcoin pumps then the altcoins and then kind of like more risk you know more risk on assets and then you get into freaking meme coin that just because they have like whatever elon said this week on x in the name it pumps right which makes absolutely no sense but then we're you know very near the freaking peak where anything will pump right yeah, yeah and the thing about like when you're in a bull market you don't know when it's going to top out so like we could double up another another from here we just could um i don't know i mean i'm i feel fortunate that i have a lot of positions already and i got you know positions low just because, you know, I actually was loading up when Bitcoin and Ethereum were not at the bottom, but when they were like around 19K, 20K, when Bitcoin was around 19, 20K and Ethereum was like 12 or 13 or whatever. I wasn't thinking, oh, I want to try to catch this, you know, whatever, $300 or $500 Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum that people were talking about. And then people thought, it was going down. Everybody thought it was going to a 10 or 11 K Bitcoin. And that's when I knew it was definitely wasn't going to go that low. Too many people. You have to be contrarian, right? Don't try to peg the bottom. Don't try to peg the top work in, in that range. So if you caught Bitcoin at 20 K, you did good. You, you crushed it. I mean, you're up, you're up more than a, a double on, on the slowest moving crypto of them all. If you got into any of those other top 10 coins like Avalanche or Chainlink or any of those, I think you're up like three or four X, you know, just a lot of those conservative ones. Um, and, and and like you said, this is the beginning. If it does another two or three X from here and you got that position, you did good. So that's where the confusion comes in. You hear the FOMO, people are making money and now you want to get into the market. What do you do? Well, um, you want to get into the market. So, I mean, if you're at that point where like FOMO is like everywhere, then I'm not so sure you should get in. I mean, it's, it's kind of like too late, kind of like what being a contrarian is all about, right? It's like, you know, if people are just like down, down, whatever, just like it's a good moment to hop in. Like, don't just wait for like the perfect opportunity when like technical analysis says no because of harmonics and Fibonacci and whatever. You have to wait until this. Like, it's just a small percentage compared to the great upside that you know is coming, Right. So instead of just trying to catch Maybe 100% DCA. of something, just get, you know, a good chunk of it. So maybe DCA is now is the best time to DCA because you don't know if it's going to keep going up or go down and you protect yourself from that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, DCA right now, it seems like a good idea because now the trend is going to the upside. It's a trend. It's not, you know, we're not going to go to 100K tomorrow, but it yeah. is a trend. You know, 
pullbacks so, will are going. You know, we're going to see pullbacks, and we haven't really seen any pullbacks yet. So we know it's coming. We just don't know when. I kind of predicted that we would get a pullback if we got closer to 50k. Um, I find it hard to think that we could pull back to like 30k or something like that. It's it would be too. We would have gained nothing, and there's too much momentum too much interest in the market that we'll get that kind of a pullback we could pull back from 45 to like 39 or something but then you know it, it there's a lot of resistance right now i think to have a healthy pullback we, we probably have to shoot up a little bit more so um as crazy as it's you know like i was in a group i don't know like a month ago and i it wasn't that long ago but bitcoin was like 29k and everybody was predicting what Bitcoin will will do one month before the halving. And everybody was like, oh, I think it'll be like 30K or 32 or it'll be right here or 25K. And I was the only one that came in and I said, I think it'll be somewhere between 45 and 50. It's already hit my mark and we're not even there yet. And I said, I don't think we're going to get a pullback until after 45, which we're really close to that, right? So we're not really getting a pullback. We're getting more of a, a cool down or just a, a breather. But if we ride, go to 48 or even as much as like the low 50s, 55, then we can do, then we can do a 30% pullback and it, you know, it'll make sense. But, but then we'll keep on going. I mean, cause like, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll pull back into, you know, to, like 40k or 41 or even dip to 39 but it'll be very short-lived right so to get a big pullback like that i just it seems like the market has got too much momentum right now it's like a juggernaut once it gets moving it's tough i'm the juggernaut <laughs> funny yeah yeah totally so, which is exciting yeah. if if we see a 50k if we see a 50k bitcoin then it's really going to stimulate alt season and meme season it already has because everybody's front running the markets right now people people know that altcoin season is coming so they're loading up way early whereas last time altcoin season took a while this time we're seeing altcoin season like literally right behind bitcoin like it's not that delayed the lower cap ones and a lot of these ones will probably, you know, are going to, they're going to come out of nowhere. But if you think about each cycle, there's always like an entire lineup of coins that is brand new for that cycle that really shoots to the top 20. And we haven't really seen any of those yet. All we're seeing is resurging from last cycle. We're seeing a lot of people talk about like Solana, Chainlink. Cardano, you know, uh, Avalanche, Immutable X, like, so the new ones, the new, the new guys, the new ones that are going to, they're going to take off. We haven't quite seen that roster yet. We don't know what it is, where it's coming from. They usually come a little bit later and then they just blow up. And, and that's what I want to be looking for. I want to be looking for those because those are the ones that do the, the thousand X. Yeah, like get the get the latest narrative that's really going to pick up, right? Um, like it took me a while to kind of get into Axie Infinity because I wasn't really that sure that like gaming or even Axie Infinity was actually going to make it. But then it was it was kind of like it was it was a it was a, 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 a coin toss for me, right? Because uh, I mean, it's either going to be very, very short lived, those huge gains, and I'm already late, or it's going to keep on going. So I mean, <laughs> in, 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 in hindsight, I guess I should have not aped in, you know, with a huge amount, but just like getting er very early and then hope for that 150, 1000 X or whatever, right? It's kind of like when you're when you're you know doing meme coins or shit coins. It's like don't settle for a 5x. I mean, because most of them will go to zero. So you actually have to let it ride so that it offsets all of the freaking losses that you had on failed projects. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've 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 retired from meme coins. It's just too much noise. But I'm glad that I dabbled there. And like I said, I 
I'm not down at all. I'm up for sure. But a lot of that has to be with being in a community that kind of heads things, right? A big community of people that launch their, you know, you, you find out inside, inside information uh, about projects that you know are launching that aren't going to be rug pulls, this and that. But the noise is, I just can't deal with it. It's just, to me, it just seems like a dumb way to try to make money. It's not easy to, to make money in meme coins. There's always going to be people that did well. But a lot of those people that did well last month or this week are going to, they're, they're going to get crushed next month or next week or, or, or at the end of the bull market. So it's definitely not what I would say is a smart way to go. It's a fun thing to do. It's, it's a lot of fun. The meme coins, it's gambling. You're basically gambling. It's more fun than going to Las Vegas. Like now when I go to Vegas, I'm bored, bored to sleep. I walk through the community, the casinos and they just, they're so boring. Once you've played in the altcoin, the meme coin cesspool, like going to Vegas is, it's just not, it's just not the same. You know, it's just not that exciting to go. I can sit down at this table and breathe secondhand smoke for three hours and, you know, maybe I'll make 500 or a thousand dollars. It's just like, how boring, how boring does it get? You know? So I, I wonder if, if Vegas will uh, get hit at all because so many people are just like, I, I don't need to go to Vegas to gamble. I, I, I can do it right here in, in, you know, in the shit coins. I wonder if crypto will affect Vegas negatively in the, you know, maybe not right away, but in the, in the near future, because I mean, we have this open casino, go ahead. It, it It is an open, yeah, I mean, it's an open casino, but at the same time, there's just something about in-person events, you know, like the vibe that you get, like it's easier to I just agree. Like blend in. No, I agree. I just think that it's just not as interesting. Like, I think that it would affect their top line because I, I know a lot of people that are happy now gambling and they don't really care about going to Vegas. They're just not, they'll, they'll go, but like before it used to be like, you had to go to Vegas if you wanted to get that kind of excitement energy. You don't have to do that anymore. So instead of going to Vegas three times a year, it's like, yeah, maybe go once, you know? I mean, yeah. yeah. If you live in the U S then you have to like settle for Vegas or Atlantic city or whatever, because Gary Gensler is still anti crypto, right? So he's just like effing up the whole industry for the U S in general. I mean, that's what he's doing. It's like, oh, I mean, he's he's effing it up, but he's not stopping it. It doesn't matter where you are with with a little bit of research and a little bit of, you know, direction from other people. You can easily be playing in here. Playing in this, they can't stop it. You know, once once you're in Ethereum and you're in an EVM chain, you can play this game. You can move around. It's it's risky. You know, there's NFTs, there's OTC. A lot of that's going on. Um, you know, you know, there's guys doing OTC now in like Miami and places like it's basically under the table and they actually pay now a percent over instead of charging you, they're paying. Oh, so they, they buy it at a premium. Well, yeah, they're, they'll, they're like, Hey, if you, if you do OTC, I'll give you a percent over the, the market value you know, one or 2%, they're actually going over now because it's, it's actually, and I, I have a feeling this has to do with meme coins and all these altcoins and stuff is people want to get into this. And they don't want to have to go through Coinbase and they don't want to have to go through these exchanges. So they're just like, you know, can you get me some crypto? I'll pay you in cash. I just sold my car or whatever. I want to, I want to get whatever 10,000, hundred K in crypto, but I don't want to go through the, you know, the channel. So there's, oh, a lot of these OTC, which tells me the fact that there's doing this in places like Miami that is that crypto is in demand right now. And there's more and more people that are getting into crypto that are telling their acquaintances and friends and family. So now they're the crypto person and uh, they kind of feel more in confidence saying like, OK, like you're in crypto. Like, can you get me like some Bitcoin or whatever? And they'll just like go through them, you know, peer to peer just, instead of opening up on Coinbase. Because, yeah, I, I mean, know. and there's a lot of new OTC people just doing it. I think this is the beginning of what I've predicted 
years ago is that we will eventually go peer to peer and people will start just going outside the system in their business, kind of like accepting cash, like the US, like all around the, the US now is they're trying to do away with cash. Like there's restaurants that you can go to. Uh, I went to a restaurant in San Diego. They don't take cash. You got to pay with credit card. It's it's like, what? I is think, that because they chose? The, the, the restaurant yeah. chose that or? Mm -hmm. They just don't want to accept cash. Now, I don't know if that's legal. I, I, maybe it's not legal, but they try to push you to it. I mean, in the airports, you can't pay with cash in a lot of airports. If you want to buy the food, the only way to buy it is with credit card. So they're trying to do away with, cash but you know what crypto is going to be right there to replace it and what's going to happen is people are going to I, I, this is my this is what i think is going to happen i don't think there's any way the government can stop this actually they're just going to speed it up by being idiots because when there's something like that that people want and they want to trade and they don't want to have to use these systems because the systems screw you so much i mean the customer support places like coinbase da 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 they hold your money they force KYC on you over and over. They lock your money up. So people are going to be like, well, I don't want to have to deal with banks. I don't want to accept cash, but I will accept stable coin or crypto. And I've already seen businesses start to do this. And I think that this, this can happen really quickly. Like it seems like it's really far out, but a year and a half from now, it could be everywhere that people are now ex accepting stable coins and stuff because it's another form of cash that you can accept. You can just say, pay me in crypto. I'll give you a discount. You know what? Instead of using your credit card and this and that, just pay me in crypto because I can take this crypto and I can spend it over there where I want to, I need to go buy that and they accept crypto. So just pay me in crypto. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to find that all these things that they're trying to put in place is just going to speed it up a lot faster. And that's my prediction is right now people go, well, you know, what do I need to do when I need real money? Like people still think in the terms of US dollar is real money and crypto is just some fake money that, you know, that you have to figure out how to how to sell it one day. No. I mean with EVM chains and uh with uh cross chain swapping like Thorchain you know, it's going to get better in the next year and a half, I think, with the demand and people are going to start accepting crypto and they're doing it all over the place. And it's really it's hard to trace it, because if you have a crypto wallet and you just say, you know, I'm going to create a brand new wallet and I'm going to accept crypto and I'm only going to. Use this wallet where I can pay with crypto. It's so easy to set up a new wallet. There's no way to to trace it, track it, unless whoever sent you the crypto is, you know, somehow recording it or something. So it's going to be like cash deals. And, and this kind of stuff's going to be happening in the street with, uh, you know, just simple wallets, you know, especially with all these second, these uh, layer two chains and stuff where, um, you know, I, I, I think that that's the key is different chains and layer twos are always fast. So, they're all going to be connected. And that is what Chainlink is going to be doing, right? Chainlink's CCIP technology is supposed to be able to link and make all this work better without having to have bridges. I don't quite understand it 100%, but some people believe that Chainlink is like, it's going to be like, it's going to be like the um, TCIP of, of crypto. You know how everything, everything on the internet runs on, the TCIP protocol, right? Um, yeah. But we don't even know it. It's so it's so down there that nobody even realizes it pays attention. To it. But Chainlink is potentially putting that forward. So that's why I got into Chainlink when I heard about this and the potential of what they could build is basically the foundation and the infrastructure. Um, at the least, it's it, it. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of speculation going on what it could be. But if it works and it and it comes out, then um, it's going to make, it's just going to make everything so much more interchangeable, everything, all these different chains and stuff It'd be a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like the future is definitely multi-chain. I mean, it's not like, I, I don't think it's kind of like one chain to rule them all. And that's kind of like what, uh, 
the the, the way that Eric Voorhees is kind of looking at it, that's why, you know, he's very close to, you know, Thor Swap. It's like, dude, instead of just like, you know, having this maxi mentality of just like there's just one chain and my chain is better than your chain, like, why don't we just like build bridges between chains that are already working? You know, I mean, it's, it's just makes things, uh, you know, easier and people will pay with whatever. And it can become like a TCP IP protocol, mm -hmm. like you were mentioning, that people don't even know that they're using because it's infrastructure. It's something that just should work under the hood and people just use whatever they want to use. And that's it. That's the end of it. Yep. Yeah, and that's where it's heading. And that's why I say like crypto is going to be so easy to accept and transact as long as you have a wallet. I mean, you can already, I mean, it's going to get more friendly, but you can already carry a ledger around and use Bluetooth to transact with your, your mobile, you know, if you want to have a hardware wallet simultaneous. Um, and, you know, like I can see, like I can visualize people like at a swap meet or a flea market, you know, a market where people are just pulling their phone out and buying and paying and like crypto right there instead of cash um, and just accepting whatever is the, the, the currency of the, of that location, you know, and, and that's the thing, right? You, you'll, you'll go to places and you'll know what's the currency they accept there. And then before you go, you just swap over to that currency and then you can go do your shopping. Um, and it's going to be easier and easier and easier. So, uh, that's where it's going. I think, I think we're going to see it. I think we're going to see glimpses of it at the, at, at the peak of this bull market. So, middle of 2024 2025 and then i say i think come the next bull market i i think it's going to be there we're going to be we're going to arrive yeah and there's also like uh you know that we we've had uh the last uh two events for the rate hikes uh they haven't raised um you know the uh uh, the interest rate they have the fed hasn't raised the interest rate so that tells me that they're they're in this pause so they they rose they rose a little bit less rose a little bit less and then pause pause and then it it won't be long before they start lowering interest rates and you know we're gonna have printing money and then you know speculation and bull market and euphoria again so it's it's just a cycle guys just you know acknowledge that it's a cycle and right now it's historically been a good time to, you know, slowly get into crypto. Will we have retracements and pullbacks? Sure. This is a volatile market. But in the next one or two years, history has said we will see higher prices. So there will be chance just like, you know, uh, see, seize the opportunity. I mean, as long as we have stable coins working and spreading, um it, it it works the system works as long as you can get in and out of stable coins pretty easily then the whole system works the question is at what point does the u.s dollar you know start to lose its its place as a reserve currency what what will become the replacement if needed be right that's when the crypto market will be a little chaotic and it makes sense that it'll have to go to bitcoin but maybe not could go to ethereum could go to bitcoin you know myspace was the first social media platform that kind of that that worked that took but they did it they didn't do it so well and facebook came in and basically destroyed them so bitcoin's the first one that worked might not be the one that actually it becomes the reserve currency yeah i don't know what it's going to be but i think uh it could be Bitcoin, you know, it could be, but maybe not. Or maybe it won't just be one. Maybe it'll it'll just be a few chains that become very st stable and the prices become stable because that's really all it is, right? All a stable coin is you want to be able to know that what you buy next week or a month from now is going to relatively be around the same amount of money, right? So right now, the only thing that kind of does that is the, the dollar, right? All stable coins are pegged to a dollar. Now, I wonder, I wonder if that makes somehow indirectly or directly makes the dollar stronger because if we're all moving to crypto but we stay with well i think the problem will be the government won't be getting what they want 
because stable coins don't necessarily have to be integrated into the you know the u.s economy people can create algorithmically traded stable coins that just follow a, a set of rules we haven't quite yet figured it out you know like they've been manipulated and, and wrecked but as time goes on they might actually figure out how to keep it pegged you know yeah it's a uh, you know it's still a young economy and a young industry we still have to figure out how to decentralize a lot of that stuff and definitely stable coins are a big part of it um and evidence of that is they are kind of getting you know under under the sec's shoe so you know they're gonna be um really under under review and that kind of like you know puts the issuers in a tough spot hopefully tether with all of its stuff will still be around because if tether kind of freaks out and falls down and th that that could be a really a really hard blow for crypto or or just a new way of doing things right in the last cycle the probably the most important thing that was discovered was uniswap the the way that it does its decentralized exchange before that decentralized exchanges just didn't they didn't work right they they had no hope and then uniswap came around and it changed the game because it truly was a decentralized way of doing it and not needing you know the the liquidity pool right it was a brilliant idea so there may be a way because if you can create a stable coin that is a decentralized coin that somehow has an algorithm that's able to basically stay pegged i don't know how or what it's going to do that but i'm sure it's possible at least for now to the dollar but you can't touch it because it's a decentralized coin and it has its own exchanges it's connected directly right to EVM. It's you can't shut it down. And if people want to use it, they're going to use it. So if they figure out how to do that, which that's what Luna was supposed to be, you know, UST was supposed to be an algorithmically, you know, traded stable coin that worked and, and balanced itself out. But it just it wasn't there. The tech wasn't there. It just it got it got wrecked, destroyed. It doesn't mean that there isn't an invention or a method that'll come along. And if that gets solved and people don't have to use USDT or USDC because they trust this one better, it'll be a game changer. And I, I can tell you that people are already working on it. Yeah. How, how will it, they're saying that it should be, it is possible with Chainlink as an Oracle and CCIP that something like that is possible now. So I think that's going to be the, the you know that's going to be interesting to see if they can figure that out. I mean, closest thing we have right now, I, I believe it's Dai, and Dai yeah. did have a deep peg. I believe they did have some sort of like a hiccup, so to speak, but it's still around. Um, yeah, it's just not as trusted, but it's working. Yeah, it's definitely around. Is that completely decentralized? Uh, so that has that has collateral with like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few other coins. Um, but so it's we're close. We're close to it. Yeah, yeah. It might not be perfect yet, but it, it could get pretty damn close to perfect. It, it it's just it like it's unbreakable. Yeah, yeah. It's just like Bitcoin. Like there was like you know hash cash and Bit Gold and a few other you know before Bitcoin before like you know Satoshi kind of came, kind of came up with all of these elements that actually made Bitcoin uh, sound money and just like decentralized and you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it maybe it needs to have just just like you know we need just need to wait, see it grow, see it morph. Maybe something else comes along. So. Well, there will be something that comes along this cycle that is is amazing because every cycle so far, there's been something new, right? There was altcoins that came about in the first cycle. Nobody had thought of that, that you could just clone and fork coins, right? Then we had ICOs, which was amazing, right? What a way, you know, like when I saw that, I was blown away. 
we had ICOs. That was probably the big thing in 2017. That was the main thing. It was just ICOs. They had NFTs and stable coins, but nobody was really, really paying attention at the time because everybody was using centralized exchanges. Um, so centralized exchanges had, you know, sometimes they had their own dollar coin or whatever. They were doing using USDT a lot, but people weren't really holding it outside of exchanges yet, right? So that's right. why it, nobody really knew what it was. They just figured it was a dollar. But now everybody's holding them outside of exchanges. So in the next cycle, which was the last cycle, 20, 2021, we saw a lot more things pop up, right? We saw the automated market maker, you know, Uniswap game changed it big time can you imagine crypto without a uniswap without a pancake swap it's hard to imagine what crypto imagine. was like before that existing what would we were do? there yeah, yeah. It's like, what would we were there mean? you had to basically trust all these exchanges that exit scammed right so that was huge that that came uh we had launch pads which didn't exist um which fully centralized but launch pads were a big thing we had um defi you know, all this DeFi and lending platform, you know, all this uh, DeFi that didn't exist the cycle before that. We had Bitty NFTs games. that, yeah, NFTs, yeah. We had NFTs, meme coins, <laughs> meme coins weren't ever a thing oh, yeah. until, until last cycle, last cycle, they became the main thing. Whereas, you know, Dogecoin and all that was kind of a thing, but nobody took it that serious before that. This time, this last cycle, Dogecoin and all the memes blew up. And then NFTs, algorithmically generated NFTs, you know, the PFPs. That's like six major things that happened in the last cycle that didn't exist, that nobody was really paying attention to before that. So what's going to happen this time? It's going to be, there's going to be just as many things. I mean, hopefully cash will still be around because, you know, like it or not, it's really easy to just uh, use it as an exchange mechanism. Like, and Richard Harder has mentioned this, like, you know, the the uh, infrastructure, connectivity infrastructure is really weak. And like you got, you piss off Russia or North Korea or whatever, and you kind of have like um, a country that's isolated from the internet. What the heck do you think they're going to use? Like Bitcoin or payments? No, like they'll just like, you know, cash or barter with like, I don't know, cigarettes like they, like they do in prisons, right? So cash is like it or not, it's really easy to just exchange hands and just settle something, right? So hopefully they don't, they won't displace it, but you know, who knows? I mean, that's what stable coins are like. It's like cash, but you can do it on your phone. So you don't have to carry around a bunch of money. Uh, in your pocket, you know, it's kind of on your phone. It can be connected to your, you know, passcode. So every time you want to transact, so it's not easy, you know, people can't just rob it off you. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that that's, I think that's what we're going to see in the next five years is we're going to move from cash to digital, digital stable coins that are going to act like cash. And there's probably going to be algorithmically, algorithmically traded ones like die that are, that are even better that just don't have to listen to the government. They'll be completely decentralized. It'll be decentralized and done with code and there'll be nothing they can do about it. They'll kick and scream and cry and bitch and moan, but they won't be able to do anything because nobody will own it. And it'll just, it'll just function at least for a while until it doesn't. Um, and plus, you know, I think currency is a very tribal thing. And I think there's always there's not going to be just one coin like these maximalists that think Bitcoin is going to take over and be the only one is stupid. It's it's amazing how many smart people believe that narrative that everything will die and Bitcoin will be the only one. Nothing works like that in this world. It's like languages. That that would be like saying everybody's going to speak English and all languages are going to die out. Did that happen? No. Why? Because humans are very tribalistic. We don't, when something gets too big, we want to move away from it and start something smaller. So that's how currencies work too. You know, if you're another country or whatever, and if you don't have to, you don't really want to use the dollar because the dollar kind of uh, manipulates your country and holds you hostage to it. So the same thing's going to happen with coins, people, you know, different organizations and tribes and even groups within countries are going to be like, if you want to purchase it here, you have to use our coin or this coin. And go go exchange it. We won't accept that coin. So that's that's always going to be a thing. Now, 
Bitcoin might be the reserve where people price everything against Bitcoin, but maybe not. There has to be something. You know, there has to be some form of reserve. So the dollar might be around for a while simply because there's nothing better. There's nothing out there yet that people will trust as a reserve. Everybody thinks in dollars. Most countries think in dollars. I mean, every country I've been to around here in Central South America, they they it always kind of defaults to dollars, you know, at the root. Yeah, that's something that even when I talk with people like other Latin American countries, um, yeah, right. they uh, they they kind of price something. I was like, how much is it? I don't know, like uh, a liter a, a liter of milk in your country, and they would say, oh, it's like these many pesos, and they would say uh, it's like about these many dollars. So that I, which I don't really know what a you know a peso is in whatever country, I can kind of understand that with yeah. Like, if you're traveling from another country. Dollars is what makes the most sense to everybody. So even though you speak Spanish, if you're in Mexico and they tell you pesos, you, it's like just tell it to me in dollars, even though you're from a Spanish-speaking country, and it makes it makes more sense. Yeah, you know, that's how you can decide whether it's a good deal or not, or it's expensive, or you're being ripped off. Is you have to be able to think in the reserve currency, which is dollars. You don't go to another country if you're from Costa Rica. You don't go to another country and say, "Well, how much is that in colonis?" <laughs> right? you say, it's like, you go, how much now? is it in dollars <laughs> i need to think in colonis like it just doesn't work that way you know like mm -hmm. yeah so whatever so, country you're from wherever you go you think in dollars is just the way it works yo how's right. it going Vince? we got nice people tuning you. in this is just kind of a rat oh it's it's 5 30 do you need to you need to go to your meeting yeah yeah i kind of need to be wrapping up here so um okay but yeah, guys, it's it's been fun. Hopefully, uh, you know, you learned something, you had some fun, some entertainment, something to ponder about. And I guess we'll uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, yeah. Today's session was more like us thinking out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just I mean, out loud thinking. But um, it's good. I like to think out loud because it, it it brings me back to what I need to always go back to, and that's yeah, principles, the principles and the fundamentals. Because even, even though I've preached them so much over the last couple of years, I get sidetracked in crypto. It's it's hard yeah. not to. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll let you guys go. And um, we'll be back probably in the next few days. Um, random videos, different topics. Keep you, keep you guys focused on the fundamentals and the, um, what would you say? Fundamentals and the what? Uh, principles yeah principles yeah but then sometimes we're going to come up on here and we're going to be straight meme coin shit coin in it so you never know when that's going to happen you never know so stay tuned <laughs> all right catch you later see you guys right on see you guys peace peace